and welcome to another history special. And today I'm going to take a walk around what was once the location of the Roman town of Venta Iconorum. Uh, and it's just up these steps. Get to the top. Now Venta Iconorum was the uh, was situated by the river Tass, uh, the confluence of the uh, of the Wensum, the river Wensum, and the uh, the river Yar. And it's just south of uh, the city of Norwich. And this was once home to a, a peaceful a Celtic tribe called the Iceni. Now you've probably heard of Queen Bo Boudica or Boadicea as she's uh, often called. Well, this was the home, the settlement of the, uh, the Iceni tribe. And they were a peaceful tribe. They numbered about 300 in total, or thereabouts. Very small tribe. And they lived in harmony with the Romans, who of course uh, had conquered Britain for the second time in AD 43. And their king was a man called uh, uh, Prasuticus. And he was the husband of, uh, of Boudicca. And they had two daughters. Uh, history doesn't name uh, the two daughters. But they lived quite independently. The Romans were around and the Romans left them in peace. That is until around AD 59 when uh, Prasuticus died and uh, Boudicca took over as the queen of the Iceni. Well, under Roman rule, women weren't allowed to become uh, tribal chiefs or, uh, or queens. So uh, Boudicca was, uh, was, uh, was arrested, she was taken in, uh, along with her two daughters. They were mistreated and, uh, and raped before being returned back here to, uh, to the tribal village. And that's where history starts to get interesting for Boudicca and the Isimi tribe. Boudicca wanted uh, revenge on the Romans. Uh, but because the Isimi tribe were, were a small tribe, they needed some help. So they joined forces with other tribes in the area further up in, in Norfolk and also to the, with the uh, much larger Trinovantes tribe, which uh, dominated most of what is now uh, Essex. They, uh, they had their headquarters, their main centre was in the town we call today Braintree. And what happened next goes into the legend of British history, because just to the south was the, uh, the Roman capital of Cuma Ludinum, modern-day Colchester. And Boudicca's army, well, we'll call, it, we'll call it Boudicca's army because it was a mixture of other tribes and the Trinovantes, but Boudicca was their leader, she was their queen. She was, uh, she was the person who was, uh, I think, calling the shots, really. So her army marched down towards Colchester to attack it. Now, the governor of, uh, of, of Britain at the time was uh, a man called Gaius Suetonius Paulinus and his army was out uh, in Mona, which is modern-day Anglesey, sorting out a little problem there. So Colchester was relatively, well, Cumaludinum was relatively um, lightly defended and Boudicca attacked. She slaughtered everybody people in the streets, people in their homes, and even the people who had taken refuge in the temple of Claudius, all slaughtered. The temple of Claudius still exists today in uh, modern day Colchester. It's actually the foundations, the underneath of what is uh, Colchester's Norman Castle. 
uh, so you can actually go down and visit and uh, and see where the event happened. But mass mass bloodshed in Colchester. But Boudicca didn't stop there. She marched on Londinium, which is the new capital of uh, of Roman Britain, modern day London. She did the same there, and then moved on to uh, Verulamium, modern day St Albans, and uh, and sacked that place as well. Much loss of life and destruction of property. And then we'll march west to meet the Romans. Well, the legion was a uh, oh, friendly local. <laughs> uh, a, um, uh, the Roman army was in, was in Anglesey and the, a word had got to them that of what had happened in uh, Cumaludin and Verulamium and Londinium. And the army marched eastwards to meet Boudicca's army. Boudicca's army herself was marching west. So somewhere outside Lactodora, modern day toaster, on the A5. Uh, there we go, so at the entrance here. Uh, they met in battle. There we go. Actually get in here, which is nice. There we go. They met in battle just out of, just to the uh, the west of Lactodorum, and um, Boudicca's army was uh, was surrounded. And even though they, they the Roman army had had less soldiers than the uh, the Icemi, Boudicca's army, Boudicca's army still came second best, and they were all slaughtered. Roman army were what were disciplined in battle. They couldn't, the yeah, see, we couldn't um, use their normal battle tactics because they were hemmed in, they were blocked in by the Roman army. And, uh, and they say they were all slaughtered. Even Boudicca herself was, uh, was slaughtered. Well, we're not quite sure on that one. Historians are, are out on that because there's evidence, there's this, this uh, belief that she took poison and killed herself, or she was killed by her own men to, uh, to stop her falling into the hands of the Romans and being tortured and killed. But, but Boudicca was a feisty character. She was a, she was a warrior. She had fiery red hair. And I don't believe that um, she took poison at all. I think she would have have died in battle and uh, I think that uh, the army would probably have, uh, have helped finish her off, her own side would have helped finish her off if need be, but I think she probably died in battle, died at the hands of the Romans and uh, But we never know because no evidence has ever been found of just where that battle took place. No evidence at all, no, no mass graves and uh, no finds have been found by archaeologists anywhere to actually indicate where that, actually, that last battle took place. Uh, which, is, uh, which is a shame really because uh, I'm sure history would like to know. But after the battle, the, uh, the bodily remains of uh, the dead would have been uh, probably have been burnt or buried in a mass grave after burning and disposed of. The Romans would have left no trace, I'm sure, and covered their tracks. But it's one of the great battles of, uh, of the Roman era, wiping out Boudicca's army. But now, just uh, walking through the field here of, uh, of what became the, uh, the Roman town of Venta Iconorum. It actually, it actually translates as market town of the, uh, of the Iceni, because this was a thriving, it went on to become a thriving town under Roman rule. There have been big gatehouses at, uh, 
at either end and uh, probably four big gate houses usually with four entrance entrance gates into the Roman towns and uh, they would have probably have looked something similar to the the Roman gate that survived at Cardiff Castle uh, but it's only looking at the this site from the air you actually get to see the uh, the scale of the uh, of the settlement and uh, you can actually make out the outlines of the Roman roads and the buildings um, from the air but there's nothing much to see here on the ground I'm just going to walk out to uh, through one of the other other gates that's open just down here is a, a section of the old uh, the old Roman wall Roman wall let's get through this uh, this gate there we go There's not much actually preserved down here. The original walls of, uh, of Venta Iconorum were uh, about seven feet uh, tall, seven meters tall, I think, according to the, uh, the archeologists. But all we can see here now is the, what remained of the, uh, of the inner core of the, uh, of the wall. Far cry from how it once used to be. This area was uh, quite strategic to the Romans anyway, so I think they were probably looking for an excuse to take over these, uh, these lands from the Iceni. And the death of Prasuticus was probably that catalyst that they needed. Um, following the, uh, the battle and the, the end of the revolt, the Romans settled here built a small town, uh, contained amphitheatres and um, forums and Roman baths, temples and uh, they really made their mark on this, uh, on this area. Another nice bit of wall just here, wow. There would have also been a garrison here as well because this is also very close to two Roman roads, the roads that connected uh, Norwich with the Roman well, Roman towns to the uh, to the west, and also Norwich to uh, Camulodunum and Londinium to the south. It was um, the Roman writer Ptolemy. Well, he described Venta as one of the um, the significant town in the ter territory of the uh, Iceni. So it's also significant for the Romans as well. And while I'm quoting the Romans, it was Tacitus who actually, uh, the Roman historian Tacitus, who actually uh, recorded around 75,000 deaths in the attacks on the three towns by Boudicca's army. Uh, 75,000 deaths in combined from Cumaludinum, Londinium and Verulamium. But making my way round now to the um, to the, uh, where am I, the eastern side I've got the River Tass on my right or the remains of the River Tass and there's another section of, uh, of wall here this one's a little, little larger than um, and the other sections I've just passed. Let's follow this path. Yeah, let's follow this path down here. It's quite a large section there. I'm just wondering whether that might have been a another building on the outside. Perhaps the remains of a tower or something sort of bastion or maybe just a, a large section of wall that's uh, it's fallen next to the uh, the main section oh, there's a little pathway here that leads down to the uh, the river 
Wow. It's quite pleasant walking around here. I know it's a cloudy day and it's a bit, uh, it's a little fresh, but it's still very pleasant. Imagine the uh, Romans coming down here to collect water, or certainly the, uh, the Iceni coming down here to collect water from the river through uh, to feed their animals and let's water their crops. It's quite pleasant actually. Just down here. There's a bench obviously the locals sit on. Really rather really rather pleasant. The yeah, I see me would have uh, lived in uh, in round houses basic basic structures that have been um, we tended their crops, had their livestock to help feed them and uh, and to uh, just to help on the land with the ploughs. It's really rather pleasant here. Just get a sense of just uh, perhaps the, of the tranquility of the place. And just imagine the tranquility. Before the, uh, before the Romans came. But it's nice that this area hasn't been built on or wasn't settled in medieval times. Because along with um, Roxeter and Silchester, these are the other two Roman towns in Britain that were not settled on or habit or settlement didn't continue through the Middle Ages, medieval period, and on through history. Now, the modern town, modern village, I should say, of uh, Caister St Edmund is just a mile or so away. So, and then of course you've got Norwich, I suppose, two or three miles away. Which is probably the reason that um, Venta Iconorum was never resettled in the post-Roman era. Because it's already established town of Norwich, because it was a town back in those days, with thriving centre of commerce, trade, um, and connections to um, Roman road connections to other to other larger settlements throughout the country. But the area to the right, just the other side of the Tass, that was, um, that was settled in Saxon times and uh, they built houses there. Um, it's also square houses as well. They put, when the railway came in, because the railway line's the other side of the Tass, so when the railway came in, uh, archeologists found um, found Saxon burials, and also coins and other finds from the period, which is, uh, which is interesting. So there was settlement here, just the actual square we know as Venta Iconorum just wasn't settled. And I'm so pleased that actually that's, that is the case. Because I remember, oh, must have been about 35 years ago, I did visit the, uh, the Roman settlement at Roxeter, and uh, they've un the archaeologists have actually uncovered that, so you, there's quite a bit to see. You can actually see the remains of the buildings. But here at Venter Iconorum, those buildings are uh, they're all they're all buried underground. The remains of the uh, the Roman the Roman houses and the Forum and the amphitheatre as well. And they found skeletons in the Roman cemetery here, which um, shows that the person died, died of trauma. So we know that were gladiators, gladiatorial combat here, as you would expect in a, in a Roman town. But the Romans, they integrated their lives with that of the Icemi, the remains of the Icemi tribe, because it was the women and the children that were here. And uh, that integration 
led to uh, the continuation of the settlement and the remains of the, the Yasimi became Romanized and their descendants uh, were brought up in the Roman way thus ending any other rebellion against the, uh, the Romans. Romans finally left uh, about 350 years later around 410 AD and the Romans left, left behind so much in their buildings and through the archaeological finds that have been found at the various sites around the country and it really is absolutely fascinating. I remember my first history lesson at school was learning about the Romans and Boudicca and I've been fascinated with the, uh, the Roman way of life ever since. And I try and visit as many old Roman sites as I can. And I'm still excited today by just walking past and walking through sections of, um, of Roman wall. And uh, I hope to visit a lot more sites as well. But this has been on my bucket list to visit for, um, well, I suppose about 40 something years I've been wanting to come here. But there's another section now I want to go and take a look at, which is on the um, eastern side. Uh, there's a church here of St Edmund, it's Edmund's church. They built that here, but there's another former postern or entrance gate on the eastern side. And I'm just wondering if there's any Roman remains up there. So I'm just gonna take a walk up there and, uh, and have a look. Just up here. Well, this is the eastern side of Venta Iconorum. This is where the eastern postern would have been. Uh, let's go through these gates here. Wow. Look at how they open them. There we go, right. Yeah, there's nothing here. No sections of wall have, have survived. It's a little bit poking through the, uh, the ground behind me, which is, which is all that's here. But there is a little, little information board you can see behind me, and it shows the um, it shows where uh, some of the buildings, the forum, and the uh, amphitheatre uh, would have been in Roman times, according to the uh, the archaeological plans. But even though there's there's nothing here to actually to see physically, there is so much here because it's it's nice to relate the knowledge from the history books, the accounts from the archaeologists, and put it all together, and actually just walk around the outside of what was once a Roman town and the centre of the uh, former Iceni tribe, knowing what happened here knowing the people who lived here, well certainly Boudicca, and, uh, and understanding their way of life. But after the Romans left Britain, settlement changed. People didn't live in the towns, they wanted to move out of the towns into uh, more rural environments to, uh, to tend their livestock and their crops. And uh, that began a new era uh, of, of settlement in Britain, which is probably the reason why Venta was never settled in again and it's now preserved for us all to enjoy and walk around and it's been pleasant walking around here and so here on the eastern side of Venta Iconorum I end this video thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon for another history special somewhere else